God. They speak of a God, a God whose Holy Spirit guides us uh, when life's dark maze is where we, we seem to be not knowing how to, to tread life. And the griefs that are in our lives, they're all around us. And we need a guide. So that, and, and in prayer to God, just these words of such beautiful theology, bid the darkness in my life turn to day and wipe the sorrows away and never let me stray from thee as you abide with me, as you walk with me. This is the, these are songs of faith. This is songs that, that speak to looking up and using the eyes of our, of our body and the eyes of our spirit to truly see God and respect Him for the holy God that He is. Our greatest opportunity and responsibility is that our life would, would be one that respects God respects the divine authority of God that is in creation, it is in the, the salvation uh, and rescue of the Israelites in the Old Testament. It's the authority that we find in the Psalms and the songs of the Old Testament that speak of the mighty majesty of God. But to look, God gave us eyes, and both physical and spiritual eyes, to look upon His, His glory. And to respect that authority. We see the divine authority in Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. And we see the authority of the Holy Spirit as Peter preaches and teaches to the early Christians what has been seen and then explains the mystery. That it is not invented by human devices or imagination. It's not always eloquent because it is shared by ordinary people with an extraordinary message. But he refers to that glorious truth that on this mountain, the voice of God said, I love this person, my son. And all I ask you to do is listen. Listen to Jesus. And we wonder, how do we listen to Jesus when Jesus is not physically with us, but His words have been preserved in the Holy Scriptures for us to study and to reflect upon. Take a minute and, and walk with me back up a mountain called Sinai. In the Old Testament story, uh, and it covers, it covers quite a, a lot of chapters and a lot of things go on in the book of Exodus before Moses actually goes up the mountain. God speaks to him of all kinds of covenant instructions on how to live a life that respects God and respects others. And Moses shares this with the people, but there comes a point when on the mountain, the presence of God arrives. And when the people see the presence of God, it's the same presence that Moses saw in the wilderness when he was, when he was looking for sheep of his father-in-law and he found a bush that was burning but wasn't consumed. Because the presence of God is like a fire that doesn't consume, but it draws us to his holiness. And there on the mountain, a fire erupts. The presence of God looks to all the Israelites like a fire. It's not consuming the mountain. And then the most incredible thing happened. Moses goes up into the mountain like he's going into the fire. But when he gets there, there's another strange thing that is only something of God. Moses finds it to be a dense cloud. The same type of cloud that they've been following uh, in the wilderness, been guiding them uh, during the day and the, and the fire at night. But that cloud is so dense that it, it neutralizes the senses. It's no, you can't see your hand in front of you. And it's really a fearful thing to be in the presence of God when you can't even see your hand. You can't see anything. You're afraid 
you're really moving, you could fall off the mountain because you don't know where to go. All you can do, all you can do on that mountain is be still and listen to God. This is how, this is how the, the scriptures of the Old Testament and the, New, and the gospel and the epistles, they all weave together the same God, good news of, of the authority, the divine authority of God in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. There's really only one correct human response to the power and authority of God, and that's respect. We hear the psalmist respect in their words. We hear, we see it in all of the scriptures that are read. The psalmist says, Magnify the Lord our God and bow low at his holy mountain, because the Lord our God is holy. The last couple Sundays, the scriptures have told us that to be holy is what God calls all of us to be. And we cannot be holy except by his indwelling spirit that, that enables us. To, to choose a life of love and forgiveness and mercy even as it's been demonstrated in Jesus Christ. This is, this is what it's all about. And we cannot do anything any more than Moses could move in that dense cloud. All he could do was listen. And we're in the presence of God right now. And he's asking us to be still and listen Listen to the words of the scriptures. Listen to the songs that we sing and praise that have been inspired to be written down and shared over the generations. You know, my faith looks up to thee. It's just amazing. In Exodus, the Lord says to Moses, come up on the mountain to me and wait there. And I will give you stone tablets with the instructions and the commandments that I have written in order to teach Israel, to teach the nation. Hey, you have to realize that this is actually the first example that I ever came across in college in Bible studies of cliff notes. Okay? God has spent weeks and weeks and weeks, 40 days, or so he's been, uh, he's been talking to Moses and he's been sharing all the, uh, all the covenant instructions on how to live, how to eat, how to relate to one another, how, the importance of, that, of respecting people's property and their reputation. And he's, he's gone on and on. And there's a lot to cover. And he said, come up on the mountains and I'll give you a son. I will make it so simple that even a child can understand. The Lord your God is one God. And you will respect Him. And you will have no other gods besides Him. And you will, you will honor Him. You will honor the, the Holy Sabbath, a day of celebration, not of work but of celebration of the power and majesty of God. And you will not hurt one another. You will not hurt their, their body, their physical, their possessions, their reputation. You will love them. And there are so many ways, Jesus said, we can break those commandments in our minds and in our hearts, even though physically we have not broken the commandments. Oh, how... The gift of, of reasoning that God gave us can be distorted to our own, uh, our own preferences. I did not hurt, lay a hand on that person. I did not steal anything from them. And yet, I have spoken so many cruel things about that person. I have insinuated that they are not worth a friendship. I have told others not to respect this person. Because it is done. It's, it's just wrong. But I have not killed them. I have not destroyed them. I have not taken anything from them. Well, hogwash. Jesus says, if you can, you can hurt a person, you can, you can destroy a person without ever laying a hand on them. And you can steal the most 
precious thing from them. And that's their, their own self-esteem, their own, their own reputation. We can covet the people who know and walk closer with God. We can cover that relationship and want it for ourselves so much that we're envious rather than appreciative of their gifts to the body of Christ. Jesus, God speaks to Moses and just said in a very simple way, but it, it takes a lifetime to unpackage that gift, to unpackage that covenant. And we fail and fail and fail. But God loves us as all fathers love their children. And as we fall down, He picks us up. As we get lost, He finds us. When we get in trouble, He saves us. We respect God's authority. When Jesus goes up on the mountain, when Jesus goes up on the mountain, the cloud forms again. And the cloud, this time the cloud is not seen by Peter and James and John as fire. But it's glowing like, like a sun. And we can see that. When I read that again this morning, I thought about the fact that uh, as I get older and my eyes are beginning to, to develop these cataracts and stuff, it's hard to look at these newfangled lights that people have on the cars that, that are so bright. I mean, it's like the sun hitting me in the eyes in the middle of the night, and as soon as it passed, I'm in darkness. It's scary. And I have to slow down when I see that. I have to look as far away from the light and, and use my what vision I can on the side of my because that brightness is overwhelming. And there on the mountain of transfiguration, there's a cloud, and, and Jesus is inside a cloud. But then the cloud radiates a light that is like looking at the sun. And it scares, what's that word we mean? Scares the bejeebus? It's one of those theological terms that they use in seminary. Uh, it just scares, I always say it scares the pudding. Uh, and, there, and so Peter, Peter and, and James and John, uh, they hear what they hear is thunder. They hear it is thunder. They don't fully understand and comprehend what this is because the words of God are so powerful. I love this son. I love this son, my only son. I am pleased that he has taken the responsibility to live among you, to grow with you, to experience your life. And now, as you've seen in part at the, at the wedding of Canaan, at, with the arrival of the wise men, with his baptism, you've seen little bits of his divine nature. Now know this, you have my divine nature walking with you down this mountain and walking with you all the way to Jerusalem and walking into the crowds of the Passover. You have divine and respect that. Listen to him. Look into his eyes. See the glory and majesty of the Christ. And later, as the church begins, the followers of the way and the word and this man from Galilee, the, the followers, they, they want to know more. And now they're ready to listen to the stories. They're, they're ready to listen to the eyewitness experiences of the disciples. And they're honest. If I was one of the disciples, if I was Peter, I'd have said, well, you know, I was up on that mountain with Jesus and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was just praising Him and I didn't have a fear in my heart. I mean, I, I could have took on the whole world up on that mountain. Because I wouldn't want anybody to know that I was so scared that I fell flat on, the, on my face in the dirt. That it took Jesus coming to me and saying, don't be afraid. That's, I, I wouldn't want to be that honest. 
and put it into writing where others are going to read every time they read. They're going to say, that's Peter. Every time he has an opportunity to be brave, he fails. And if everybody's only looking for Peter's failures, or Paul's failures, or any of the other prophets, or the king's weaknesses, if that's all that anybody wants to look, they're missing the power and majesty of God. And they're not respecting the Holy Spirit. Because God guided, guided every one of those disciples. And as they walked the earth following the resurrection, the power and the message was straight from God through the Spirit that guided them. And they respected that they could not do this. That was Peter's words. I did not make this up. God said Jesus is His Son and he was crucified for our sins. And he rose from the dead. I don't care what any of the Roman authorities say. He rose from the dead. And he ascended into heaven. And he sits at the right hand of God. And there's a little bit more to the mystery. And that is he's coming again. And the way we honor God. The way we honor Christ. And the way we honor the Holy Spirit is when we respect one another. When we respect others. Some of you uh, have heard this uh, African Zulu uh, uh, greeting that says, I see you. Sawabano is what is in the Zulu. I see you. It's, the, it, it's a greeting that's based on their philosophy of Ubuntu, where we're not fully... We don't really fully realize who and what we are except in community. Until others see us and we see them, we're not fully arrived and matured to what God would have us to be and to experience. It's more than just, hello, how are you? It, it, can't, be, it can't be done and text at the same time. I mean, you cannot walk up to somebody with your phone going, Salabano! I see you. You don't see somebody when you're looking at a, at a little box in your hand that's more important than a person. That's not respect. That's disrespect. And when the Word of God is read and we don't read along, that's disrespecting the Word of God. If we just sit there and listen and think that we can follow such a deep Scripture without reading along. Now, our worship committee... We've done everything we possibly can to make it possible for everybody to read the scripture during worship. Prepared you so that you can prepare for the sermon for the next week by reading the scriptures that are going to be used. So that you can look at commentaries. You can figure out what are my questions? What are the things that I speak to me? And then come together and build that worship together. We need to respect the presence of God and not sit in worship ignoring Him. Ignoring His Scriptures and ignoring the Holy Spirit. The Hebrew meaning is all around seeing. To respect God. When God says, I respected Abel's gift in the Old Testament, it's the word for I see that gift. I see that person who's giving, giving, making the sacrifice. When, when God is saying, I respect, I respect the, the people, the kings that are that that have been anointed, David. He says, I have scrutinized this man. I have looked into his eyes. I have, I have seen him. And when somebody says they respect God, the Hebrews say, we're looking at God. We're, we're intensely trying to understand what God has for us today. Genuine respect is an intentional turning to face the divine authority. And then allowed a long seeing, a long gazing into the power and majesty of God. When we talk about seeing Christ in one another, you cannot do that with a cursory glance. 
You've got to gaze and ponder and, and, and dwell until you know that Christ abides and that there is a connection. Respect divine authority. Or go somewhere else. Call yourself something else, but don't, don't say you respect God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and not honor and respect one another. After that seeing, we know in our heart, in our mind, that God is the only power. And God has all the authority. And anything we accomplish in this transitory life is a gift of His Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. We pray with you. Heavenly